Good morning from Stab the Dragon. This is Friday, June 24th, 2022, with a special edition of Stab the Dragon for the latest news. The United States Supreme Court overturns Roe v. Wade. This is going to be a, a wild ride starting today. And there's going to be a lot of celebration from the pro-life crowd and I think a lot of rioting and mayhem from the pro-death crowd, from the pro-abortion crowd. So we're going to talk about this a little bit uh, this morning. In 1973, of course, Roe v. Wade was decided by the Supreme Court and this allowed abortion in the United States. And through the years, there's been various courts at the state or federal level that have ruled in a variety of ways to either try to place limits on abortion or to remove all restraints. This decision was a result of the sexual revolution of the 1960s that made sex without consequences or obligations or moral constraint the greatest good for mankind. This decision in 1973 was anti-human in the sense that it sacrifices the life of the baby uh, for the pleasure or whatever of the whim of the mother. The decision was also the result of a gradual revolution in the legal and political realm that said the United States Constitution was not an objective legal document but was a living changing document that could be molded by the court by bureaucracies, presidents, and the Congress without having to go through the arduous means of a constitutional amendment process. This legal constitutional theory in the last 100 years, see, that this stuff goes back a long time. Even, even the sexual revolution of the 60s had its uh, precursor in the 1920s, actually. And this, this legal constitutional theory goes back over 100 years in, into the 19th century. But this legal constitutional theory reflected the changing theology of America, the faith of America. Remember, philosophy, economics, politics, art, all that flows downstream from the religious faith of a people. And the religious faith in America basically said that man had become the measure of all things. That God's law is subjective because we're descended from the apes. We're a product of blind chance and evolution. So see, the, the theory of evolution that Darwin came up with in the middle of the 1800s, that affected every area of our culture. And it affected theology, but theology also helped bring that about. So there's this critical intersection of theology, politics, law, morals, philosophy, science, all of these things produced Roe in 1973. And I would add that Roe in 1973 represented an extreme failure of the church in America. Unsound doctrine, heresy, beginning as early as the 1700s with Unitarianism that entered the Congregationalist churches of, of New England. You do away with a core doctrine like the Trinity and you end up with, well, you end up with what we've got today. Now, in Baptist life, the and I'm Baptist, the crucial doctrines of the sovereignty of God began to fail in the late 1800s. And by the 1920s, we Baptists and the Presbyterians along with us were becoming a mess. So conservative Christianity, then, uh, because of our internal failures, our internal squabbles, we began backing out of the political process early in the 20th century. Consequently, law schools and universities became liberal leftist bastions. Public education was infected by the likes of Dewey and Mann and socialist, that's Horace Mann, uh, and socialist ideals uh, infected it so that by 1973, the church was not even prepared for the fight. Shortly after Roe, the church started waking up. You've got the moral majority of Jerry Falwell, beginning by the late 70s and early 80s. Focus on the family with Dr. James Dobson actually was a huge key, key role player in this whole battle. Uh, and, and Focus on the family began at about the same time in the late 70s. So then people started waking up. 
the pro-life movement began. You get protests at abortion clinics and, and at courts and uh, politicians, things like that. You get sermons. You know, I, a lot of churches would give an annual sermon on uh, the pro-life cause. Uh, there, there, we would begin searching for pro-life politicians, and soon the Republican Party was being directed by the pro-life side of the party. You got Ronald Reagan elected president in 1980. <clears throat> Now, there were some notable failures along the way. Uh, both Reagan, Bush the first, Bush the second, appointed some good justices, but also some bad ones. And so you had inconsistency in the Supreme Court, even though you know we were pushing for good Supreme Court justices. But that inconsistency was very disheartening. Uh, with Trump, though, we got three solid conservative picks for the Supreme Court. Despite the big Eva crowd opposing Trump, Who's Big Eva? Big Evangelicals. We're talking about the Gospel Coalition crowd, guys like Russell Moore, David French, Mark Dever, Tim Keller. All, all these Gospel Coalition guys seem to be Democrats and seem to be opposed to Trump. But now today, June 24th, 2022, we've got a major victory over Roe. Why? Because of the three justices Donald Trump appointed during his presidency. So my question to Big Eva, Will they come out now and say, we were wrong to oppose Trump? I mean, look at the devastation that Biden has brought upon this country in, in the last year and a half because Big Eva opposed Trump. Well, will they come out now and apologize, saying we were wrong? No, that doesn't work. Leftists never apologize. We need to understand that. Only conservatives apologize. Leftists never. And that means left-leaning Big Eva. So what does today's decision mean? This decision does not outlaw abortion across the USA. This decision basically says that Roe was decided wrongly. There is no uh, inherent right to abortion in the Constitution. They made it up in 1973. It was bad constitutional law. And that's pretty objective. That's objective reasoning. And so it throws the decision back to individual states to decide. There you go. This is a very good federalist position. Let the states decide. Why then, if it does not outlaw abortion, does this offend the left so much? Because to the left, abortion is the sacrament in their religion. Big government and sex are the gods of the left, and this decision strikes at both, even though it does not outright, outright outlaw abortions. Now, we conservatives have insulted and thwarted the gods of the left. The blue states will maintain abortion rights. Many of the red states will outlaw the practice. And the purple states, well, they'll have a big fight for many years ahead. The Biden administration will do everything they can to nullify this decision up to and including promoting riots, deliberately failing to protect Supreme Court justices from threats like we've seen with Justice Kavanaugh recently, aggressively seeking to inhibit red states from enacting laws against abortions, I would look for government funding cuts from the Fed to states that seek to ban abortion or some other similar measures. What will the left woke mob do? Well, look for riots, murder, looting, arson, and mayhem to begin today because that's what the left does. Think George Floyd riots of 2020 all over again, times two, right? The riots from two years ago, times two today. I, I, I really think this is going to get bad and ugly all over the country. This could very well be the communist revolution the left wants. I've been saying ever since the November 2020 election fiasco, that the midterm elections of 2022 may not even happen. I am so deeply suspicious of the left that I think there could be a manufactured crisis like the one that's happening, going to happen this weekend, or a real crisis like war with Russia, which is a very real possibility, or a war with China, another very real possibility this year. And then the left will use these crises to cancel the elections in the fall. That's a possibility. This is not a prophecy. I'm not saying 
you know, the odds are, I, I'm just saying, man, th this is, in, in my head, this is a 50-50 chance. The writing's going to start today, and it's going to be part of that. But that's not, you know, to say that, you know, the elections might happen. I just, I'm doubtful, okay? Now, for the church, yes, this is a victory. So praise and thank God for this miraculous sign of His grace on America. This is a great act of God's mercy. True churches all across the country should be rejoicing and praising God this Sunday for this decision. But a word of caution is that while this is a legal and political victory, it's only that. We should be grateful. Yes, this is a needed win. Amen. But we need a great revival that is heaven-sent, Christ-centered, spirit-led, Bible-based, and Reformation-sized. Pray for that revival because only when the hearts of millions of Americans are transformed by God's amazing grace will this nation truly be made strong once again. Practically speaking, I would say be prepared for violence, especially in the cities, even in conservative cities like here in Fort Worth. Have food and water, guns and ammo, medications in stock. Churches and pro-life centers, pregnancy help centers, all these need to have some security measures for the foreseeable future. Even Chick-fil-A. Yeah, even Chick-fil-A. If you have to drive in a downtown area or around these pro-life centers, look for large unruly crowds. Don't even go there. Turn left, turn right, turn around, get on the sidewalk, back up, whatever you have to do. Don't drive through these large protests. Okay? Long range. Long range, thinking long term. Don't think that just because we've won one today that the fight's over. Absolutely not. The Biden administration is pure evil and will do some dirty things like try to stack the court maybe, impeaching justices maybe, simply not enforce the law, right? This fight will never go away until Christ returns. There needs to be a Christian effort to retake the education system, the university system, law schools, press, news media, because Christians have retreated from our culture and we've got this mentality that says, oh, I can't, I can't run any industry or business. I can't speak up. I've got to just keep my faith to myself. That mindset has cost us the culture. Those institutions are controlled by the enemy. Even Christian universities are compromised with critical theory, critical race theory, sexual revolution, gender revolution, whatever you want to call it. Communism is what I call it. And there needs to be a cleansing. However, we don't need to return to a closed-minded fundamentalism that is anti-intellectual. We need a spirit-led, Bible-based intellectualism that is rigorous and fair, but solidly based with sound doctrine as our safeguards. We need to be praying for our law enforcement as the riots begin. Again, think about what happened two years ago. Pray for the protection of our justices, our churches, pregnancy help centers. Pray for conservative politicians. They're going to come under attack. If, if you're in the workplace and people know that you're pro-life, that you're a Christian, be prepared. I mean, be prepared with, with scripture, be prepared with godly answers, uh, try to love your enemies as yourself, but things are going to get ugly. I, you know, I am not optimistic on this. I really think that our society is, is going to go bonkers, right? Because abortion is, is, is like the sacrament of the left, as Rush Limbaugh used to say. And, and so we're attacking their faith. This victory is an assault on the gods of the left. Understand it in religious terms because that's what this is. All right, well, this is going to be a very interesting uh, weekend. Stay, so stay tuned. Keep your eyes open. If you're on a church security team, be ready, be diligent, and uh, be prepared. So uh, Stab the Dragon is out for now. Praise God for this victory, but rough times are coming out here.